Every year I try to get into some of the bigger Italian horror films, and each year I fail. This season I had a Fulci 3-disc set available to me that seemed to be worth trying out, but after watching City of the Living Dead without realizing that I'd already disliked it a couple of years ago, and then House by the Cemetery, which isn't much better, I felt like Fulci was going to be a director whose movies weren't ever going to speak to me. But then came the third movie in the set. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. That's it, that's it, you're such a good girl. I wish I could be as excited as this guy is about his dog fetching things. Strangest voice I ever heard. Sort of like a duck. Like a duck. Quack, quack, quack. Just like that. Not that he said quack, 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 but that was a tone, and he made an appointment to meet her. Stupid! Hey, I don't even think of. Okay, wait. The killer literally quacks. He makes duck noises. Is this a parody? What? What? The violence of the attack that follows is just obnoxious, but that's par for the course for the Fulci movies I've seen so far. Hope you're a depraved fuck because he's speaking directly to you with the gore. So what's the good news? He used a blade. He stuck it up her joy trail and slit her wide open. Good lord, guy. Disgruntled Lieutenant Fred is on the case and he partners up with a college professor who knows things, blah blah blah, you know the drill. There's a lengthy segment involving a live sex show that ends with a killer making duck noises while stabbing a lady in the vagina with a broken bottle. On one hand, sure, that's something I've never seen before, but all this stuff is just gratuitous. Fulci has a real eye for making things as grotesque and unnecessary and unpleasant as possible. Also, it's clear that the killer just hates joy trails. The midsection of the film gets a bit bogged down with the introduction of a couple who have an arrangement where the wife goes out and has all kinds of sexual exploits, some of which she's into and some of which she's mildly horrified by. Then even more characters are introduced as a woman is attacked after getting off the subway, but then has a hallucination that her boyfriend followed her into a movie theater and attacked her as well. From there it seems pretty clear who the killer is going to turn out to be, but the film does a good job in the final act making it seem as though it could be potentially two other characters as well. I mean, these people have a framed Doug Henning print on their wall, so they're definitely candidates. While my rating might seem like the New York Ripper isn't much better than the other two movies in the set, it's actually very watchable aside from all the vagina stabbings. I'm a sucker for New York City movies from this time, and despite the investigation being rather rote, it was still compelling enough for me to see it through to the end. And speaking of the end, wow, does this movie ever pull an explanation out of total left field for the murderer's motivations. Also, I have to give it credit for Fulci reining in his obsession with zooming in on everyone's eyes at all times, like he does in the other two movies on this set. It's not gone completely, but it's toned way down, and I'm very grateful. 